Hey guys, Ingerance here, and I got two reviews coming out straight for you. And these two films I have seen the back to back weeks, and both of them are very separate. One's Mission Impossible uh, Rogue Nation, which is I saw in the second week, and the first week, Ant Man. Now let's get straight to Ant Man. Ant-Man is basically what you expect. It's, it's another Marvel film, and it's the 12th uh, in the cinematic universe. And what do I think of that film? I thought it was uh, I thought it was a decent movie, and it's uh, and it's, and it exceeded my expectations of a, of a certain rating, which I will reveal until the later this video. But let's get to my pros and cons. The comedy in this film is. Uh, but as you say, it's great because I actually felt like I laughed because it's very clever with his jokes and self-aware of what jokes they news. Like for example, during the end of the film, which I won't ruin the joke because I hate ruining jokes for everyone. Because if you ruin a joke, it won't be funny for them. And there's one joke in the, in the end of the film, which which is like the one of the funniest sequences. It's like uh, the whole entire shrink thing, and everything grows. That's one of them, and and one of the I forgot his name, but it's not Paul Rudd. It's just the guy, one of the supporting characters. That's in the poster, and he's one of the most surprising characters in the film. And he always makes up a good standout line because he every time he seems like the, he's explained to Paul Rudd's character. Uh, what's going on? He always makes it sound like he's doing stand-up, which is very great of what he do his doing. And wh what else are I gonna say about the comedy? Uh, it's, it's strengthness and its growth uh, on those uh, times are pretty clever. And now it's, I'm gonna move on to the performances in this film. Michael Douglas, he does a good performance, and if you wanna know, he doesn't die. And Paul Rudd has a very good performance in this film, and I and the one film I saw him before this is Forgetting Sarah Marshall, which I review later as a Jason single f uh, film retrospective, which is following his films uh, towards How I Met Your Mother and after how, and during How I Met Your Mother towards uh, and onwards, which I'm probably gonna do, but it's up in the air. So be aware for that if I ever do it. It's probably going to be like in a couple of years once I actually finish How I Met Your Mother and reviewing Sarah Marshall. I've been doing like a breakdown. But I had to continue on the Ant Man review. Paul Rudd, he does a good job in this film. And the way he performed, performed in this film was very, very believable. I believe his character and I believe his struggles. And when, I, when you see his struggles, he struggles to get a move on to get to see his daughter which is very heartbreaking at times and and this film made me like ants that's how uh, that's a good job what Marvel did they made me like ants they made me love ants <laughs> ever heard that before if you know what I'm talking about that is and I will answer to your comments if you guessed the correct film. If you guessed it wrong, I won't reply. Or just come and say, eh, eh. What else I like to talk about this film? The visual effects, or the special effects, are all they look specially good. And But it has the obvious shine of the visual effect. But the CGI was very well cooperated. Because it looks amazing. And hopefully it gets nominated for the... Excuse me, uh, best visual effects uh, nomination. Uh, what else is there to talk about? Oh, yes. Oh, wait. Uh, yes, the villain. The villain of this film is... Uh, he's okay, but he's got the imitation part right, which I like from villains. But it's just to end out as a generic villain... As we've seen for every Marvel movie, which I will usually discuss in a Mar What's Wrong with Marvel video. And that's it. I'm just going to reveal that. 
But you know, but he has a clear motivation, and I believe his motivation, like Jeff Bridges' is a villain and a character, I mean, uh, in Iron Man. I believe that. Same to him, but he just came, comes across as a generic villain, which makes you go, Marvel, you have to do it. And, and it's due to sometimes say. Uh, I'm trying to remember what else I don't like about the film, but it's just every time it feel like, but in all the Marvel tropes. Oh yes, I remember. A few scenes in the trailer, a few scenes from the trailer. Mission Impossible, bitch! Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. And did it give you a little backstory with me and the uh, Mission Impossible franchise? Just like the uh, Fast and Furious uh, 7 review, I never watched his previous uh, movies. And uh, I thought I'd bring that, that little update, but I, uh, but I was interested to watch the other films on the list and this was on my in the most anticipated list but it was called Mission Impossible 5 then so if you want to look at that you can look up my top 10 most anticipated movies of, of 2015 so you can uh, able to watch it so let's get to let's get straight to Mission Impossible Rogue Nation Mission Impossible Rogue Nation which I saw last night and, now, and the previous footage was from uh, is based uh, and it has no years like years after of uh, after protocol, but it has the same like plot line from protocol, which is MIS is wiped out or dismantled. So even Hunt is after the guy after organization or guy. See see uh, see the uh, similarity. But this film rocks, and here's why. One, one, the suspense in this film is better than the France of Furious franchise. That's only if I were to make it versus, but the suspense is already knocks out of Fast and Furious. The reason why I say it, put Fast and Furious references in this review is because in, in, in Screen Junkies movie fights, they had a debate of this, and one going, well, it's a Fast and Furious franchise that has a storyline and the Mission Impossible franchise doesn't. I would counter him with, uh, make money with, what about suspense, dude? Because really, there is no suspense in Fast and Furious. Because there's rarely, you don't see the characters dying. Rare. All you see is Vin Diesel surviving ridiculous situations. And you know I'm not the biggest fan of the Fast and Furious franchise that will watch the next one and not the previous ones. And I will make it as a series for set if, if I decide to watch them. But uh, continue on in this review, which includes the plane hanging off the plane scene, which turns out to be the very beginning of the film, which I'm deeply surprised of, because it makes sense of its beginning. What else is? What are the other ones? Oh, the underwater security scene. Whatever it is. That one's very suspenseful. Oh, I felt like Tom Cruise was gonna die then. That's a, how good that was suspenseful was. The car chases. The brilliant. And the action is well done and was well choreographed. And at least they have some bullet time on this. And, and also the female character in this film, the main female character, Kicks ass, fuck yes. You need we need more of female that the female characters that kick ass and able to fight with the main heroes, and that's what she does. She's better than Black Widow in my opinion. But we need to get Tinny on this review. I thought the villain was okay, which is like step out from Ant Man, and in in my opinion, in in my review bundle, because it has. Because the villain is always, he sounds, he sounds like the ready, uh, ready man may, uh, from Jupiter Ascending. I'm gonna harvest the earth tomorrow. And seriously, he's 
The way he talks to Saturn reminds me of Eddie Renmei's awful performance in Jupiter Ascending. Seriously. Compared to two guys, smacked them Saturn, combined them together, and they still have that voice. But enough of the voices. How, what are other things that, uh, that I liked about this film? Cast, the cast did a really, really good job. And they did their purposes right. And when again, and, and uh, what I said, the art of change in English is uh, uh, great. Now, are they great? And and it's pretty much, and the pretty much the stunts are pretty much uh, very realistic. And I believed that Tom Cruise is actually there. And I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate comments for that. And what I, uh, what do I don't like about this film? Sorry about that. I decided to check my iPod for criticisms. Uh, so I can express them before I give the final rating. Uh, the villain are gonna continue. To, are gonna talk about again. During the course of the end of the film, he does a shoot the hero when he's in, like in point blank range, which I don't understand. I would have went shoot him, fool. But that's a minor spoiler there, in case you're uh, very picky of spoilers. And and it's not that many hints to like the next Fish of the Possible film, which I'm uh, sorely uh, uh, hint to uh, hint, um, hint to uh, make her videos. Uh, don't want to do them because uh, they didn't want to, to figure out the next film, whenever they do it. That is. Uh, I will give. This, uh, I'm gonna end this review, and I will give this film. Four and a half out of five stars. Great film, and it's, I highly recommend it, and it's already in my top five best movies of this year. And one of the most suspense films I've ever seen in my life. And excuse the barking of my dog. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy my reviews of Mission Impossible and Ant Man. And, and be, be aware of the upcoming movie reviews. So, see you guys in the next. And you're a